Melanie Corporation reported net income of 550,000 in 2020 and had 900,000 common shreds outstanding throughout the year. On May 1st, 2020, Melanie issued 5% convertible bonds. Each $1,000 bond is convertible into 120 common shares. Total proceeds at par amounted to 1 million and were allocated to the liability and equity components under the residual value method. The liability component was measured first at its present value of the stream of interest and payments plus present value of the bond maturity value, all discounted at 8%. The interest rate that applies to similar straight bonds at the time of issuance, the liability component was recorded at $922,685. Melanie's tax rate is 30%. Calculate Melanie's 2020 diluted earnings per share. Okay, so we have a hybrid financial instrument here because there are 5% convertible bonds. So we need to figure out what's going to happen. We know we're going to need to have Right, basic and diluted earnings per share in this question. So let's take a look. So we know that when we have a dilute, uh, convertible financial instrument, we need to calculate the impact on net income and on weighted average common shares. So if we look at the EPS calculation just for a second, we're gonna have net income minus preferred dividends. divided by the weighted average average shares, common shares, I should say, common, weighted average common shares. Okay, so we know that when we have diluted earnings per share, we're gonna need to adjust for net income. So diluted, earnings per share. And the diluted earnings per share are going to be calculated using the what if method, assuming that these convertible bonds are converted into the common shares. So diluted earnings, so how are we going to, how are we going to ca um, calculate the impact on net income? Well, if these convertible bonds were converted into equity, we wouldn't have had to pay out interest on them over the year. So how much interest did we pay out? Well, we recorded the bonds at 922,000. So we're going to have 922,685 is the present value of just the bonds times what's the interest rate on in the bonds. But um, this is their 5% convertible bonds, but this is the hybrid instrument. So if we look here, it says, the present value is measured first, all discounted at 8%. So the interest rate that we're going to use just for the debt component is going to be 8%, the market rate. And this is going to give us 73,814.8. Now we're going to multiply it by how many months are outstanding? So this was on May 1st. So we've got May. May is the eight, so eight, eight out of 12 months, which is going to give us now 49,209.37. And next we're gonna multiply it. So this is the fraction of the year outstanding. This is the bond value times the market interest rate. And now we're gonna multiply this by, so this is the pre-tax, then we're gonna go 30%, which is gonna give me 14,762.81 as a tax. So net of tax, we are going to end up with 34447, rounded. Hopefully those numbers work because I did this math backwards from the solution in the question, but I do like to break it down a little bit more so that we can see what's going on with the calculations. Yep, and then times 
14762. Yeah, so that's going to give you this 3447. So this is our diluted net, or net or adjusted net income. So this is our adjusted, I should, we should say, because we want to remember that the net income in the question doesn't actually change, or the net income on the financials doesn't change. This is just our adjusted net income that we use for calculating the diluted earnings per share. So then what about the weighted average common shares? So we had previous to this adjustment, we had 900,000 shares outstanding, which was given in the question right here, 900,000 shares outstanding. And then we're going to convert these bonds. So it says the bonds had a million dollars at par, a million at proceeds at par were a million and each one and each bond has a face value of a hundred thousand. So we need to, and each one thousand dollar bond is convertible into 120 shares. So then we're going to say a um, million divided by a thousand, the value of each bond, which is going to give us a thousand times 120 which is gonna and then which is gonna give us 120,000 sorry it's kind of messy and then now we're gonna need to multiply it by the period of time that these were outstanding so this same 8 over 12 that we had up here which is then gonna give us Eighty thousand rounded. So now our total weighted average common shares, and it's weighted because we included the period of time, is going to equal this nine hundred thousand plus this eight hundred thousand. So we're going to have nine hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So our diluted EPS. is going to equal our our revised net income, which is 34447. Sorry, this is our adjusted net income, which is, sorry, that was the net of tax number. So our original net income, this was the adjustment to net income. So we still need to add back the actual net income in the question which we can see up here was 550,000. So plus 550,000. So our actual net income is gonna be 500 and 84, 447. So down here, when we're calculating this, we're gonna go 584, 447, divided by 980,000, which is gonna give us our diluted earnings per share, which is gonna be 0 0.60 cents per share. What if the question asked us for our basic, basic earnings per share? Well, our basic earnings per share would simply be the numbers that were given in the question because we don't have any what if scenarios. So we would have taken the net income of 550 and the $900,000 common shares that were outstanding. And we simply would have calculated 550,000 divided by 900,000, which would have given us 0.61 share. So we can see that consistent with our expectation, the diluted earnings per share are lower.